There's a place to go where you can go with friends and family To experience love and learn how to live abundantly There's no other church home that I would rather be To find peace, joy, and happiness, so this is what I believe That you find real love, real love That you find real love, real love, real love, real love, and the jam, yeah. That's what's going to help us as African American people in business. We got to have excellence to each other. Not only that, Black Lives Matter just don't. We don't want it to, be, you know, to matter for other people. We want to matter for each other. We always holler, Black Lives Matter. Do it matter to each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Because we always find the negatives, then we find the truths. We always look for the negatives. Amen. Amen. So let us get ready. In the name of Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Mark, the first chapter. There is a word. And sometimes I wish it was more to, but he said, when two or three are gathered in his name, that he would still be in the midst. He would be in the midst of us. In Mark, the first chapter, there is a word that we probably read many times and didn't see the details because I love details. The details is what helped me out as a young man, Akil. The details, James, helped me out when I was a young man. I, I looked at the details of the word. I said, well, if the word was working for them and it's still working now, then it works. The word of God is true. The word of God never changed. The, the word of God don't get old. It stands until the end of the world. But in Mark, the first chapter, you're going to see it. You're going to see God as he is. In the first chapter, go to the 14th verse. In the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Mark. It says, now after that John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone, a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went 
after them. And they went into Capernaum and straightway of the uh, Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and Torah. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one of one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed and, and so much that they questioned among themselves. They said, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he, even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. I'm going to stop right there for a few minutes. And the title that I want to use is from the 25th and the 26th. It says, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried out, cried with a loud voice, he come out of him. I'm going to use for a title. You don't know who you're messing with. You don't know who you're messing with. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God, we thank you for this lesson. Only a few here. But Lord, <laughs> you can grow us mightily with the few because you only had 12. And it went across the nation. You only had 12 disciples. And you only have a few here. That can move. And be shakers of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your kingdom. We pray. Amen. John. John had finished, John had finished his, his mission. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness. John the Baptist wore camel hair and John the Baptist ate honey and locusts and all kinds of insects in the wilderness to survive but he didn't have to eat it but there was something special about John to fulfill the ministry and I thank God for this chapter because here John had ended his ministry John had preached the gospel and he preached the kingdom of God and John was put in prison John couldn't move no more. So now God has fulfilled the ministry. Now Jesus is about to take over. And here 
Jesus is God himself. And I, I want you to be able to see that in this chapter that he were God himself here in the flesh. You, you remember that it said that Emmanuel would come. That means God with us. God being here in the midst and God being with us. And he was God himself to come from heaven's glory to bring kingdom down here on earth that belong to the almighty God of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ. It says that now after John had been put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was a preacher. He preached like no other man could preach. And he teach like no other man could teach. His name was Jesus Christ. And he had been baptized by John. He had completed everything that it took for him. Except for what you think he should have had some kind of uh, teaching. But, but I guarantee you God don't need no teaching. God can put stuff in your spirit that comes straight from heaven. Well, y'all don't believe it. But I come by to tell you that God can do something to your spirit if you just step into the kingdom of him. If you step into his word, he would do something in your spirit that no man can, can imagine that, that will happen to you. Here, Jesus had taken over and preached and, 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 and the three verses that really got me in it, and into going into the study and I started looking at it and I said wow I got to understand the kingdom of God is at hand and it said here in the 15th verse he, he, he said and saying Jesus Christ talking the king the, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel. How many of us believe the gospel? And I'm, I'm saying, God, what do you mean? What do you mean? He said, I'm coming before you right now. You see the kingdom. You see the kingdom of glory right now. You see God standing here before you. The kingdom is standing before you. The, the, the mighty king. The king of glory. God himself have made it possible that you can touch him. Yeah. He still have it where you can touch him. The kingdom of glory is here today. All you got to do is receive the Jesus Christ that we believe in. Mm -hmm. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Amen. Believe that he died and God raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. He said, thou shalt be saved. And you still into the kingdom. But but, but, but I'm here to tell you, he said, time is at hand. You're looking at me. You're looking at what you're going to die for. You're, gonna, you're looking at me while you're teaching the word of God. You're looking at me while you're going to church for the kingdom. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. Jesus Christ said, it's at hand. I'm here. And they really didn't know who they was looking at. They had no idea what they was looking at. It said, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee. See, God was performing and moving in the spirit. Jesus knew where to go at. He went among Galilee. And he saw Simon and Andrew and his brother casting nets into the sea. He said, and he said, these are fishes of men. See, Jesus Christ was looking for people that was working. Okay? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. These are people that was working. God is not looking for people that's lazy and don't, don't care, don't want to go to church, don't want to study the word of God, don't want to go to Bible study, don't want to do anything, but they can go everywhere else, they can do everything else but 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 to, to, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness they don't want it but they come to the edge of the sea 
fixing their nets and they was working. God, God is looking for working people. Working people is who you need. Working people, working, working, working people that's going to do something. Get up in the morning, go somewhere, do some things. He, he wants to use those kind of people. But in the 17th verse, it amazed me. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Can you imagine how these guys feel? They dealt with fish. And he said, fishers of men. Because he was telling them in the spirit that I'm going to teach you how to bring people to me. I'm going to teach you how to bring men that, that are lost and men that are away. I'm going to teach you how to bring to be fishers of men. He didn't say how to fish. What we doing this morning, we, we bringing men in. We bring, see, that's why some of y'all really don't want to miss this because we're trying to bring men. We're trying to bring men to Christ. We're trying to bring people closer to Christ. People don't want to hear that. They, they don't believe it's real. That ain't real. That ain't real. But when they get in trouble, they run to the church. When they get hungry and they don't have nothing, they run to the church. They won't give to the church. The church don't need it. The church got it. The church do this. But they run to the church and the church is exhausted. They're exhausted in giving. They give uh, to the utmost. But man said, I don't want to get to the church. But when he get down and out, call the church. The church ought to be able to help somebody. They take up money now. They ought to help somebody. Mm -hmm. But I come back to tell you, if you don't help the church, they can't hardly help nobody. 